Welcome to the Easy Farm Accounting Software Tutorial. The following videos are designed to help guide you through the ins and outs of your new accounting program. To install your Easy Farm software, simply insert your installation disk and it will automatically run. If your disk does not automatically run and you see this window, click on Open Auto Run menu. The introductory screen will appear. Click Run. Here, click on Next. The next screen will show the install folder location. We recommend that you use the default location. Then click on Next. On the next screen, click on Install to begin the installation process. Then click on Close to exit the installation. When finished, remove the CD and store it in a safe location. Next, right click on the Easy Farm 8 icon. It may look slightly different than this demonstration. Scroll down and click on Properties. In the Properties window, click on the Compatibility tab. Click the box for Run this program as an administrator to put a check mark in the box. Then click on OK. Now double click on the Easy Farm 8 icon to run the program. Windows 8 users may see the following message Easy Farm 8 cannot be installed on systems with .NET framework versions smaller than 2.0. To install the required .NET version, right-click on the Windows logo in the bottom left corner of the screen and then click on the control panel. Then click on Uninstall a program. Next, click on Turn Windows Features on or off. Then click on the box for .NET Framework 3.5, includes .NET 2.0 and 3.0. Click on OK and the required files will be installed. When installation is complete, you can install EasyFarm using the above instructions. Now, for EasyFarm to display all window buttons and options correctly, you should check the size that text and other items are set at. To do this, start by closing all programs. Right click on the Windows desktop, left click on Personalize. In the Personalize window, click on the Display link at the bottom left of the window. The setting required by EasyFarm is smaller 100%. If you change this setting, you will be required to log off of your computer before the changes become effective. Once your screen is set appropriately, you can continue on to registration. The first time that you run EasyFarm, you will need to fill in some information to register your program. This information includes the name, address, phone number, and email address of the individual that the program is licensed to. You will not need to input the license key to start. This you will receive in about 90 days after purchasing the program. The serial number can be found on either the top of the EasyFarm package or the CD case. Depending on your version of EasyFarm, you can send us your registration information in multiple ways. The easiest way is to click the Send button once you have all the fields filled in. If your computer is not connected to the Internet or you have an older version of the software, Click Print Your Registration Form and Fax or Mail It In to Vertical Solutions. EasyFarm has a 90-day money-back guarantee and is designed to lock up after the 90 days without a permanent license key. We cannot give you that key without your registration form. If you have your email address on the form, the key will be emailed to you. Otherwise, it will be sent in the mail. The registration form can be found in the program at Edit, Preferences, Registration Information. By now, you should have installed and opened the program.
After you have entered your registration information, you will arrive at the home screen. The first thing you will want to do to set up your books is to create a ledger. The ledger you create will include all of your assets, equity, income, and expense accounts. Most farming operations will only require one ledger, but multiple ledgers are possible. To start, click on New Ledger. Here it is important that you fill out as much information as you can. The fields that are highlighted blue are required. It is also important that the information entered in all fields is left justified. This means there cannot be any spaces to the left of the data that is entered. First, fill in your name or who you are doing business as. Next, fill in your street address. Fill in your phone number which is printed on invoices and statements. Entering your social security number or federal employer ID number is not required. However, it will appear on your tax reports if entered. The ledger name must be unique. You cannot have more than one ledger name exactly the same. It will automatically fill in as you enter the DBA field above, but it can be overwritten with a name that is a minimum of eight characters. Select the accounting year type that is applicable to you. Also, fill in the beginning and ending dates for the accounting year. Next, select the method that will be used to determine how your Schedule F report will operate, either cash or cash accrual. Next, select the principal agricultural activity that your operation is based on. The list of possible activities is found on the Schedule F tax form or Form 1040. Finally, choose one option from the available charts of accounts that best fits your operation. Once you have filled in all of the information for creating the ledger, click on the Save button. The next step in the process of setting up your books is to begin entering the balances for your asset and liability accounts. Click on the plus sign on the beginning balance sheet and then select Assets. Your screen will change and a window will appear with your asset accounts listed. Use the scroll bars, up and down arrow keys, or the page up, page down keys to move through the window. Each account's properties are listed horizontally across the screen. If you look at the account 1001, you will see several different things. Here is the account name, which you cannot modify and the unit price and the beginning quantity, which you can fill in. The beginning share quantity is the beginning quantity on hand as of the first of the year or period. When you enter this number, it is expressed as a quantity. Assuming 100% share, this number will be identical to the beginning quantity. Even if you do not work on shares of grains or livestock, you must still enter the appropriate quantity. This is the beginning market value of the asset as of the first of the year or beginning of the period. This would also be the column where you would enter your beginning checkbook balance for your checking account, usually account number 1001. Let's assume our beginning checking account balance is $6,500. Since we are setting up our beginning balance sheet, we must also keep in mind we are pretending that today is the first day of the year, calendar or fiscal. Input $6,500 into the beginning value cell for farm account 1001 and press the Enter key. Notice how the beginning book value is filled in for you. Since this is a checking account, we will not enter any quantities or share quantities. Now we will work through the next account, 1201. Make sure that your cursor is on account 1201 and in the Unit Price column. Enter $9.50 as shown in the table. Now your cursor will move to the Beginning Quantity cell. Let's assume our beginning quantity is 25,000 bushels. Enter 25,000 bushels here. Now the program will go to work.
and fill in the beginning share, beginning value, and market value automatically. Next, we will look at the process of creating transactions in the ledger. Now that we have set up our chart of accounts and sample balance sheet, we are ready to begin entering transactions. If you have not already entered your beginning checkbook balance, you will need to do so before you begin entering transactions. Go to Beginning Balance Sheet and enter your beginning balance for the checking account. In this case, our beginning balance is $6,500. This is where you would enter your beginning checkbook balance. Let's go into the checking transactions and begin work. Select the transactions menu. The empty window here is the register. Below the asset tab is the pick list window. Here you can click on the down arrow and select a different asset checking account, such as this one. You will want to set up the 1001 account for the one that gets the most use, as that will be the default one that is automatically selected. Next, we will cover the Register tabs, and then we will cover entering a check. This is the most important section to cover in detail, as many of the tools and tips in this section will help in entering other types of transactions. To set up your online financial institution, Go to Edit, Preferences, and Financial Institution. Then go to Edit, Chart of Accounts, and edit your checking account, 1001, and attach the financial institution to that account. This button performs bank statement reconciliation on selected transactions. You can select transactions by clicking in these boxes. Print selected checks in the register or print a check register report by clicking here. You select checks by clicking in these boxes. Set your transaction preferences here. This deletes the highlighted transaction. This marks the highlighted transaction as void. Here, enter a vendor to search for. Then press Enter to find subsequent vendors. In the lower half of the transaction screen, you will see a blank check. By clicking on the down arrow under Transaction Type, you can select either Check, Deposit, or Withdrawal. Withdrawal is used for any transactions where the bank automatically withdraws funds from your account, which includes debit card transactions, cash withdrawals, and other withdrawals. Select Check and then click on New. The cursor automatically appears in the Date field. If this is your very first check, you will need to click on the check number to move the cursor to the Check Number field. Here you can enter your beginning check number. The check number will automatically increment as additional checks are entered. To move from the check number to the date, to the pay to, to the amount, to the memo, etc., press the tab key. Here you can type in the date or click on the down arrow to open a calendar and select the date. Now, to demonstrate, we are going to write a check to Smith Automotive dated February 5, 2016, in the amount of $455. The transmission had to be repaired and we are going to expense it to the Truck Repair Expense Account. There are a couple options when it comes to filling in the vendor name or pay to. First of all, you can quickly and easily build a pick list of vendors. Click on Edit and then Pick Lists. Here, you can add as many vendors as you want at one time. Once the vendor's name is in the pick list, the Easy Fill feature will automatically type ahead and fill in the entire vendor's name. Alternatively, as soon as you type in a new vendor's name and you would like to add it to the pick list, you can click on the Add Modify Pick List box to add a vendor. For example, we will type in Smith Automotive. 
and then click on the Add Pick List box. A window will appear that will allow you to enter the vendor's address and phone number, tax ID, and if you want that vendor to get a 1099, vendor account number, monthly amount, memo, and save to another ledger. These are all optional. Only a name is required to save a vendor. The Insert key will open up a pick list to view or select from the list. These fields are described in more detail in the EasyFarm manual. Now we will fill in the dollar amount with $455. Once your cursor moves into the memo field by either clicking or typing the tab button, you can enter a memo about this particular check. Like the Pay To field, the Memo field also has an ellipse, so you can also build a pick list of memos. Now press the Tab key. At the bottom portion of the screen, under the Check, is the area for entering accounts. Here you will find a place to select an account by either name or number. One common mistake that people make is that they try to enter an asset or a liability account into this cell. This is to be used for income or expense accounts only. You will never input an asset or a liability account into this cell. You have several options for selecting an income or expense account. You can either type in the account number or the account name. You can switch from the Name field to the Number field by using the mouse or pressing the Shift tab, which reverses the direct of the tab. Also, by pressing the Insert key, you open up the pick list of accounts as well. Notice that if you press the Insert key or click on the down arrow when your cursor is in the Account Name field, then the list will be displayed in alphabetical order. If your cursor is in the Account Number field when you hit the Insert key, the list will be displayed in numerical order. In this example, we'll be using the Truck Repair account. The easiest method for retrieving the account is to have your cursor on the account name cell and type in Truck Repair. Also, notice that as you type the account name, it will search for the name alphabetically. Usually, you can type in the first few characters and the proper account will pop up. Here, we will type TRU and then press the down arrow on the keyboard until we arrive at the right account name. You also have the ability to create an income or expense account on the fly. When you type in the number or name of account that does not exist and press Save, a window will pop up saying, Account so-and-so does not exist. Would you like to add it? Click on Yes and it will take you to the Chart of Accounts Maintenance screen. Here, you create a new account and after saving it, you will return back to the previous screen under the check where you can now select the account you just created. The next cell deals with the amount. Since we have already entered the amount of the check up above, this amount is reflected in the amount cell at the bottom of the screen. We will not need to change the amount here simply because of the nature of this check. However, if we had written this check for two or more different expenses, then we would enter the appropriate amount for the expense account we selected. We will go into a split transaction in more detail later. Press your Enter key on the keyboard to accept the current amount of $445. This field is only used on a split transaction. The memo cell works just like the memo cell on the check face. Here we'll type white Ford into the memo field and then add it to the pick list. You can press the Enter key to continue on. Press your Enter key or click on the Save button to continue on. There are other useful tips and tricks in the manual. Next, we will look at how to post a transaction with a return credit. Here we will learn how to input a checking transaction that involved a return credit. Let's say, for example, we need to enter a purchase for $1,000 worth of fertilizer and receive a credit in the amount of $100 back for chemicals returned. To begin, enter a check to Senex for the actual amount paid, which is $900. 
Split the transaction by entering $1,000 into 5020 fertilizer purchase account and then a credit of $100 for chemical returned. To credit a transaction, simply click on the plus sign and it changes to a minus sign. Next, we will learn some tips and tricks for when we use the transaction register. To edit the transaction preferences in EasyFarm, click on Edit, then Preferences, then Transaction Preferences. Or while on the transaction screen, click on the gold star. Here you will find multiple ways to customize the way you see the data in the transaction screen. To sort the transactions, click on the column you would like to sort by. For example, clicking on the date column will sort the dates earliest to latest, and if it's clicked again, from latest to earliest. Sometimes you will find an error after you have put in a checking entry. You can change any of the necessary information at any time. Let's suppose that we made a mistake entering the dollar amount on check number 1002 to Jack's Seed Company. To select the transaction in the register to be modified, place your cursor and double-click on it. Notice the check to Jack Seed is now restored to the check screen. Here you can change anything on the check or click on the Edit button at the lower right to edit and change the account information. After making changes, it'll be necessary to save the transaction. Next, we will learn the ins and outs of splitting a transaction into multiple accounts. Now what we will do is write a check and split it to three different expense accounts. Let's say we have a transaction where, on February 6, 2016, we wrote a check to Farmers Union Oil for $350 for fuel, tools, and miscellaneous expenses. Since we purchased three separate items, we will have three separate expense accounts as part of this transaction. Enter the first expense account, type PI, and notice that Pickup Gas fills in for the rest of the account name, and then press Tab. Then, change the current amount of $350 to $153 for the gas. Now, press Tab, pass the percent of total to the memo. Press Tab again, and your cursor will immediately move to a cell titled Quantity. You do have the ability to track a quantity on any given transaction. Let's enter 90 gallons here and Tab to the memo cell. Here you can press the Home key on your keyboard to delete the check memo, then change the memo to 90 gallons at $1.70. Tab to the Cost Center cell and Tab to Save. This additional Save button should turn orange, which tells you to press Enter to execute it. Your cursor will now move to the Add button because you have an amount remaining on the right side of your screen. The entry we just made will appear in the Account Transaction window. Notice, to the right of your screen there is an amount remaining listed. This amount remaining is the difference between the amount of the check face and the amount entered for pickup gas. You will not be able to save this transaction until the amount remaining equals zero. The Add button is now selected, so press Enter or click on it. A new line will open up to enter a new account into. Enter the account name SM for small tools and supplies. Then enter the $100 in the amount. Change the memo if you wish or press the home key to delete it, then select Save. Again, your cursor will move to the Add button. In the Account Name field, type in M-I-S-C-E, for miscellaneous expense. The amount shown should be 
which is also equal to the amount remaining. Press Enter and then change the memo field if you wish. Then select Save. Notice how the three splits are shown in the account transaction window. These splits can be modified with the Edit button or deleted with the Delete button on the right hand side of the screen. Also notice the amount remaining is at zero, so the total of the three splits equal the amount of the check and the Save button is now active. For now, we want to click on Save and New to save the current transaction and add another check. As you become more accustomed to check entries, you can just double click on the Save New button. Next, we will learn how to add a deposit to the ledger. Cash transactions are used to input income or expenses that occur outside of the checkbook. Any transactions done here will not affect the checkbook whatsoever. They will, however, show up on the income and expense, cash flow statements, reports by account, as well as other such reports. From Transactions and Register window, select the Asset Account 1015 Cash. Continuing on, the process of inputting the cash transaction is just like inputting a check. Let's say on February 22, 2016, we made a cash payment to Tractor Supply for miscellaneous items in the amount of $187. Input the information and click on Save to save the account information. This same process is also used for savings accounts. The withdrawals from and deposits to savings accounts will not affect the checkbook register unless these withdrawal or deposit accounts specifically involve the checking account. Next, we will take a look at transfer transactions. EasyFarm has the ability to transfer money from one checking account to another as well as transfer money from checking to savings or vice versa. Let's step through this next procedure to see how transferring money works. When transferring money from checking to savings, for instance, you can use either a check or a withdrawal type transaction depending upon how you transfer the money at the bank. We are going to transfer money using a withdrawal. Select Withdrawal for the transaction type. Let's say we want to transfer $1,500 from checking to savings. After you have entered the account 1901 Transfer Out, you will need to press Tab until your cursor gets to the Save button or use your mouse and click on Save. Account 1901 is already in your chart of accounts. You do not need to add it. A second account window will now appear. This window is for you to tell the program where you want the money transferred to. At this point, click on the down arrow to open the Asset Account pick list. You can now use your up and down arrow keys to highlight My Savings Number 1 account and select it with the Enter key or click with the mouse. Your screen will change, showing you the current balance of the savings account. Below that figure, you will see the amount that you are transferring. Then the new balance will appear. At this point, if everything is correct, just select the Save button. Now EasyFarm will deposit the money into the savings account and automatically create the transaction in the savings register. Next, click on the Save button above the check to record the withdrawal of $1,500 from your farm checking account. To transfer into checking from another account, the process is the same except the account will be Transfer In. Next, we will take a look at how to process a utility payment to a specific utility company.
Here, we will take a look at how to process a utility payment as a split transaction and also how to create a vendor whilst in the transaction screen. Let's say we are making a check payment to XL Energy in the amount of $150 and will split the costs up between farm utilities and non-farm utilities because part of the bill covers the farm and the other part covers the household. We'll start by making sure the date is correct and type XL Energy into the Pay To box. We will click here to add a new vendor because we have not paid anything to XL Energy before. We enter in the correct information here. First, click on Save to save this new vendor. The Save button will save and close this screen. Click on the ellipse again to reopen it. Next, click on the Splits button at the bottom. Here is where we attach accounts to a vendor to be used with a utility payment. Click on New. You can have multiple splits for each vendor. To do so, each split setup will need a name. This one we will call Excel. After you enter Excel, press Tab and then enter on the Add button. We can now enter two splits. For account 6010, Farm Electricity, we will designate 70% of the bill. And for account 8010, Non-Farm Utilities, we will designate 30%. Now save. These figures can be changed anytime by clicking the Edit button. Next, we will take a look at Inventory Transactions. There are numerous items that you may want to inventory. Easy Farm gives you the ability to inventory items as you purchase them by writing a check. When you inventory an item, it is automatically added to your balance sheet. Let's create a new check. Click on the Check and New Buttons. Let's say on February 8, 2016, we wrote a check to Jake's Seed for $1,000 for Seed which is account 5010. Next, click on the Seed Inventory button and then click on the Add button. Your cursor will now be setting on the account name cell. If you want to search for an inventory account by going to the number cell, press your Shift and Tab key to move your cursor to the account number cell and press the down arrow to open the pick list. Use your up-down arrow keys to move your light bar up and down the list of accounts. If you prefer to use the mouse instead of the keyboard, up and down arrows, you can click on the asset account you want. For this example, we'll select 1284 white bin number 5. Next, enter the unit cost, which is $2. Notice the $1,000 was divided by the unit cost to give you the quantity. Tab to the Save button. The seed inventory transaction is now complete. Click on the Checking button to return to enter another checking transaction. Next, we'll take a look at borrowing money and the accompanying transactions. Here, we will take a look at processing transactions when we borrow money. Under Transaction Type, select Deposit. This time, we will do a deposit of money we borrowed for the operating note. We essentially are going to accomplish two things. First, we will deposit the money into our checking account and then increase the balance of the liability account on our balance sheet. This will occur all in one transaction. On the deposit ticket, we will fill in each prompt. 
Let's say we borrowed $40,000 from Farm Credit Service as an operating note. After you have entered the account Borrowed Money, click on the Save button. Next, a window will open asking you for the liability account that you want to increase. Notice that your operating loan will be filled in along with the updated current, change, and balance totals for your operating loan. Select the Save button. We are now finished with this deposit. Next, we will look at how to make a loan payment. When you are ready to make a payment toward a loan, these are the steps you'll want to follow. In this example, we will accomplish two things. First, we will reduce the amount of the loan by the principal paid. Then we will expense the interest paid on the loan. For transaction type, select Check if paying by check or Withdrawal if paying by electronic transfer. Let's say we are paying $2,500 total with $2,000 going towards principal and $500 going towards interest. Enter the principal payments account name first. Note, just type PR. Now enter the principal payment amount, $2,000. Next, select the Save button. Now, when the program asks what account to apply this payment to, we will select the appropriate loan. In this case, it is 2330, Operating Loan. Notice how all these numbers change and reflect the new balance. Now, click Add to add the interest payment. The account name here is IN for Interest Paid. This is really helpful when making an interest-only payment. So when doing a loan activity report, it will show all the interest and principal applied to each loan. The split transaction for principal and interest payment is complete. Next, we will take a look at setting up payroll. Before you begin doing a payroll transaction, you will need to do some setup. Some accounts are already set up for you in a standard chart of accounts that come with EasyFarm. Go to Edit, Chart of Accounts, Select Account Type, Liability. These are the required liability accounts. If you edit these accounts, each one needs to have a liability type set to payroll. The next required accounts are under Edit, Chart of Accounts, Account Type, Expense. If you edit accounts 5703, 5704, 5705, 5706, 5707, each one needs to have an expense type, Farm Taxes. Close out of Chart of Accounts Maintenance and go to Edit, Preferences, and Payroll. On this screen, you have a checkmark in the Track Liability box. This is needed for tracking the payroll taxes that you will have to pay. Also, this is where you can put in the percentage of withholding. This is just a default setting. So when you set up each employee, it will default to these settings, and then you can adjust them for each employee. Next, we will go into the Employee Setup, and here you can change the withholding percentage for each employee. Go to Edit, Chart of Accounts, Select Account Type, Payroll. You may see two or three sample employees listed here. These you can edit or delete and use these accounts for your own employees. Or click on Add to add a new one. For practice, we can edit Employee Number 1 and change it to John Doe, then save and close. Attaching the payroll account 5601 John Doe to the payroll vendor John Doe is not required, but
but doing so greatly improves the ease and speed of doing a payroll transaction. Go to Edit, Pick Lists, Vendors, and Add John Doe. Next, click on the Splits bar at the bottom. For more detailed instructions, see Index on Attaching Accounts to a Vendor in the Manual. Here you can attach the 5601 John Doe account to the John Doe vendor. If you purchased the light version of EasyFarm, then you cannot enter payroll transactions. Payroll is only available on the Plus or Pro versions. If you have the light and at some point in time you need payroll, you can upgrade to the Plus or Pro for the difference in price between the two. Payroll transactions are quite simple to input. Select Transactions, Checking, and Transaction Type, Check. Type in the date, the employee name, and leave the amount at zero. The memo line is a great place to put what pay period this check is for. The account is pre-filled if you have created the employee as a vendor. Now here, we will select Regular, as this is not an advanced check. If it were though, we would have entered an amount on the check and selected Advance. The program will automatically subtract it from the next payroll cycle. After clicking Regular, we can now see the payroll ticket information. The employee's wage is already formatted as an hourly employee at $15 per hour, as opposed to salary. Over here are the percentages allocated to different taxes. These, as well as the wage, can be updated by clicking Update Employee Information. The only required entry here is account number and employee's name. However, you will want to fill in several other fields such as state, address, and social security number, especially if you plan on printing W-2s. This screen would also be used when an employee receives a raise in pay. With no check mark in hourly, the employee would be considered salaried and the hourly wage field would say salary and you can enter their gross salary. These options are gone into more detail in the manual. Next, we will take a look at entering grain ticket sales. Entering a grain sale may seem a daunting task at first, but if we step through it together, you will find that it can really be quite simple. But before we actually get into the grain ticket, we need to make one thing clear. The sample chart of accounts has been set up in such a way that each grain bin is being tracked with a number of bushels or inventory in each bin. So, one account, such as 1201 wheat, in bin number 1 has X number of bushels. We want to make it clear that you are not required to track your inventory by bin. If you simply want to set up one asset account for wheat, one for barley, one for corn, etc., this is perfectly acceptable. Given this scenario, you would be simply tracking the total number of bushels of wheat in one asset account no matter how many bins of wheat you have. We also want to make it clear that you are not required to track inventory at all. If you do not wish to keep track of your grain inventory, you do not have to. However, we do want to make you aware of the capabilities that EasyFarm has when it comes to tracking your inventory. Before you enter a grain sale, which is available pro version only, you must first set up farms, fields, and a crop year. To start out, we want to be in Transactions, Checking, and Deposit. Let's assume that on August 21, 2015, we received a deposit from Farmer's Elevator in the amount of $6,200 minus the gross amount of the sale, which is $7,350. 
We will also process a principal payment for $1,000, a $100 grain drying expense, and a $50 charge for hauling. In the memo, we will note 3,000 BU at $2.45 and the account is wheat sales. In order for us to be able to expense the deduction, we must first enter the net amount on the deposit ticket of $6,200 and the gross amount of the sale in the account window of $7,350. Notice that after you click on Save, on the right side, you will see amount remaining of $1,150. Whenever you have an amount remaining, that tells you that the transaction is out of balance and is not completed, as we are now doing a split transaction. Notice the Transaction Save button above the check is locked, preventing you from saving a transaction that is out of balance. So at this time, click on the Add button. The first deduction we will expense is the grain drying expense. In the account field, enter Miss Crop Expense. Notice typing in M I S C space C. The rest of the name fills in, as well as the account number 5080. Now in the amount field, enter $100. In the memo field, type Grain drying. Click on Save and notice the amount remaining has now been reduced by $100. Click on Add again and for grain hauling we will also use the Miss Crop Expense account. Type MISC space C. Now enter $50 in the amount field in the memo type Grain Hauling. Click on the ellipse and save this memo as you will most likely be using it again. Click on Save, and now we should have an amount remaining of $1,000. At this time, we will make the $1,000 principal payment on the operating note. Click on Add, and in the Account Name field, enter PR for principal payment. The remaining $1,000 will show up in the Amount field, which is what we want. In the memo, type Operating Note Payment. Click on Save, and now the amount remaining is at zero, and a window will open asking for your liability account. Just type OP to select Operating Note number 2330. Press Enter, and notice the note amount is now reduced by $1,000. Notice that there are two Save buttons. The one under the check is in the Account Transaction window and saves just the account data and allows you to save each split account. The Save button above the check allows you to save the entire transaction. Notice it is locked whenever the amount remaining is not zero and unlocked when zero. It may seem a little confusing or cumbersome to have two Save buttons. However, doing so increases the reliability and integrity of the program. Now click on the Save button above the check to save the entire transaction and post it to the check register above. We have one more step to complete this transaction. This is to reduce the inventory from storage bin number 1. Next, click on the Wheat Sales to highlight it. If you have the Light or Plus versions, you will notice this will open the Crop Inventory button above the deposit. If you have the Pro version of Easy Farm, you would then use the Crop Sales button. On the next screen, click on the Add button to enter the inventory and then reduce it by the proper quantity. So with this one transaction, we deposited $6,200 into our checking account, sold $7,350 worth of wheat and recorded it as income, expanded two deductions totaling $150, made a principal payment on the operating note and reduced the balance, and reduced our inventory. Next, we will take a look at crop sales transactions.
The Crop Sales tab is only available on the Easy Farm Pro version. This tab will not only let you reduce the inventory, but also take you to the Crop and Field Manager to enter the elevator ticket and the income can be recorded to a field to get an accurate analysis. Here you can select where the crop has been stored, such as a bin or elevator. This next screen you can enter the elevator sale ticket. All the required inputs are in blue. These include elevator, harvest date, crop, quantity, and unit price. The inventory button lets you reduce the crop from asset inventory from accounting and updates the balance sheet. Next, we'll take a look at livestock transactions. What we will do here is update our inventory. Go to Transactions. Change your asset account from checking to number 1321 beef calves or whatever livestock account you need to update. For transaction type, select Increase and New. Notice the Market Livestock tab is already selected because the account type for beef calves is Market Livestock. Let's assume we are trying to add $8,000 worth of new calves in production. Click on Add and the following livestock inventory window appears. The quantity in this case is 20 and the total is $8,000. The transaction type is Production. Notice across the bottom of this window, the inventory has been updated. Next, click on Save. Your inventory is updated and your production transaction is now added to the register. To purchase livestock, click on Assets and then Farm Account 1001. Let's say we purchased 20 feeder calves for $3,000 from Farmers Livestock. We will enter this information and then click Save. Next, on the Livestock tab, click Add. Now we will enter the necessary information. Notice across the bottom, the inventory has been updated. Next, save the transaction. To report the livestock purchased, go to Reports, Production and Sales, Livestock. Select account number 1323, BCK GRD, number 1 Beef. Select Report Type, Purchases. This report will give you the date, quantity, value, weight, weight per head, price per pound, and price per head of your livestock purchased. To do the livestock ticket, you will again need to do a deposit. Fill in each prompt with the necessary data. This will be a split transaction. We will sell 8 calves at $400 each to Farmers Livestock. The account is Beef Calf Sales. Next, change the dollar amount, which is the actual total amount sold, $3,200. Now you will have an amount remaining of $100. Click on Add and enter this into miscellaneous beef expense number 5158. Next, click on the Save button above the deposit to save the entire transaction. Notice the Livestock tab at the top of this window. Clicking on this tab allows you to reduce from inventory the livestock sold. Do not use this tab if transferring from an asset account to an expense account. Click on the Livestock tab and then Add button. On the account name, you can click on the down arrow or press the down arrow key to open the Asset Pick List window. You can also move to the Account Number cell by pressing Shift and Tab key and open the pick list of your livestock accounts in numerical order. Select the Beef Calves, account number 1321. 
The definitions of all of these fields can be found in your manual. Once you have entered all of the necessary information and you are certain that the inventory ending balance is correct, you can select the Save button. This will save the livestock transact and display it in the transaction window along with any previous transactions. Now, if you are transferring from an asset account to an expense account, follow these steps. First, select the asset account 1323 BACKGRND number 1 Beef. Next, select the transaction type Decrease. Next, click on New and enter the Decrease for and dollar amount as follows. Then, Tab past the memo and the following livestock window appears to decrease the livestock from inventory. Here you need to enter the quantity of livestock to be transferred and select the transfer out for the transaction type. Notice here at the bottom the livestock asset account number 1323 is now at zero quantity and value. Click on Save. And the next window to automatically appear is the account window, where you will need to select the expense account that the livestock is being transferred to. In this example, 5159 Miscellaneous Beef. Click on Save. To test the results of this transaction, do a ledger report on 1323. and then do a report by account on expense account 5159. Next, we will take a look at milk ticket sales. For the dairy farmer, Easy Farm has the ability to keep track of certain data when you receive your milk check. Easy Farm will keep track of the advance check as well as the settlement check. First, we will begin the transaction by entering an advance check. Select the deposit button and new. Let's assume we will be receiving an advance for the month of February in the amount of $5,000 from Cass Clay. The account we will use is Milk Sales. After you have entered the account, tab down to the Cost Center field and enter Dairy. Next, tab to the Save button and enter. A message window will appear prompting you to choose either Advance or Statement. We will select Advance. At this point, we are finished with this transaction. Since we selected Advance, the amount of the deposit is stored in the Milk Sales account as an advance. Now we will continue on with the Milk Statement. Click on Save to save the Milk Advance transaction, and then click on New to begin a new deposit transaction for the Milk Statement. We receive a check for $7,850 for our milk sales. The actual gross amount of the check is $8,000. And in adding the advance to the $8,000, our total milk sales for the month was $13,000. In depositing this settlement check, we are also going to expense a couple of deductions. We are going to expense $50 for dairy promotion and $100 for milk hauling. We will assume that the September settlement amount is $7,850 from Cass Clay. When you get to the amount at the bottom of the screen, we are going to fill this in with $13,000. Why $13,000, you ask? This is the total amount of the sale. We are going to expense the $150 in deductions as well as take out the $5,000 advance. Once you fill in the $13,000, go down to the Cost Center field and then select the Save button you will see the same message window as before, asking if this is an advance or a statement. This time we will select the Statement option. Here you can keep track of information such as ticket number, protein, butterfat, solids, somatic cell count, other, bacteria, 
pounds of milk, volume and pickup premium, producer price differential, and unit price. When you get to the gross amount, notice it is already filled in with the milk sales of $13,000 for the month, which will include the advance. You will see the $5,000 advance shown in the Advances cell. This will give us a net income of $8,000 for the settlement check. Now select the Save button. We will come back to the deposit screen. Notice the remaining amount is now $150. Now select the Add button and expense the next two entries. $50 to miscellaneous dairy expense and $100 to mill calling. Having done both the advance milk check and the settlement check, you can see the flexibility and capabilities that Easy Farm has to offer. Next, we will take a look at charge transactions. The charge transactions are used in a situation such as a credit card, charge account, or a checkbook that is tied to a loan. You can process and reconcile your charge or card statement. You can take your end-of-month statement, enter, and expense each transaction. Compare the total of all the transactions with the statement, and then click on the Process button, and it automatically enters all the transactions into the register. Before you begin a charge transaction, you may want to set up a couple of accounts. The setup is the same whether it is a charge account at a local business or a charge card. For this demonstration, we will use a Visa charge card. Go to Chart of Accounts, Account Type, and Liability. Here, we have created an account 2010 Visa. Make sure the liability type equals credit card as shown. If this is a charge account to local business, the liability type would also be credit card as the transaction works the same. Next, in Chart of Account Maintenance, go to Expense Type. Here we have created a 9002 Visa account. This will be used when we write a check to Visa to pay down on your Visa account and reduce your liability. This account works like the 9102 principal payment when you make a loan payment. Here we use a 9000 account as it will not show up on your expense statement reports as you already have entered your expense when you entered the charge transaction. So this 9000 account serves two purposes, to enter your check to pay Visa and to reduce your liability to Visa. Make sure the expense type is liability. Now we are set up to begin a charge or credit card transaction. On the transaction screen, change from assets to liability. The Visa Liability account should be selected. The only difference you will notice from checking is there are only two transaction types, increase and decrease. You will always use the increase to enter a charge transaction. The decrease would only be used to do a charge credit or return. Because this is just like doing a check transaction, we will not go into any further detail instructions on the rest of the charge transaction. To make a charge purchase or return, follow these steps. From the transaction type pick list, there are two options with charge transactions, increase or decrease. Next, select decrease and then the new button. Let's assume we are returning work pants for a refund of $25. The account here is clothing. Notice the account window in the screen. The cursor is pointing at the minus sign. This defaults to the plus sign, but you will need to click on it to make it a minus. The decrease you selected as the transaction type will only decrease your liability account. The minus here is important in order to decrease your expense account. In this case, 8006, Clothing. Next, click on the Save button to save the account information. Then click on Save to save the liability transaction. 
The only difference here is how you enter your expense transaction from the statement. After you have selected your liability credit card account, click on the Process button. Notice the input screen changes to allow you to do a line item input of each transaction on your statement. This is what your credit card input screen will look like. As you enter each transaction, the amount will be added to the total on the bottom left corner. When you have entered all the transactions correctly, this total should equal the total on your statement. On this input screen, you cannot add new vendors, accounts, or cost centers to your pick list. However, you can type in a new vendor, but not add it to the list. If you would like to enter a credit, you can do that by putting a minus before the amount. When the total is equal to your statement, you can click on the Submit button and all the transactions will be posted in the register. This procedure is the same for paying a charge account or following the process of a credit card statement. Write a check to Visa and select the 9003 Visa account. After you save the above screen, the account window changed to Liability, allowing you to select the 2003 Visa account. Notice the payment has reduced your Visa Liability account. Now, Farm Credit Services and other banking institutions offer a sort of checkbook that is tied into an operating loan. As you write checks, the balance of your loan or liability increases. As you make deposits, the balance of your operating note decreases. Compared to a regular checking, which is tied to the asset accounts, which increased with a deposit and decreases with a check. We have found and recommended that in this particular situation, using the liability transactions is the best option. You will need to set up a liability account. It is best to use 2001 for your line of credit checking. As you write a check, the balance of the loan increases. As you make payments or deposit money, the balance of the loan decreases. We have tried to run this through a normal checkbook in EasyFarm. This does not work very effectively. To enter a checking line of credit, click on Transactions. Select the Liability tab. Notice the Liability Checking 2001 account was automatically selected from the Liability Pick List because it was 2001, the first account on the list. From here, the program will operate just like the normal checking. When doing a borrowed money 4902 or principal payment 9102 transaction, it will automatically open the liability window to increase or decrease your liability account. To print an income and expense statement on liability checking account 2001, go to Reports, Income and Expense, then scroll down past the 1000 asset accounts until you come to 2001. Next, we will take a look at entering dividends. When you first set up the dividend accounts, make sure that the proper accounts are set up and ready to use by looking in your manual. If they are not set up, you will want to add those dividend accounts before proceeding. Now, to enter dividends, follow these steps. Let's say we want to receive dividends from the Senex Co-op in the amount of $125, where $50 was cash and $75 was retired from a previous year. The account we will use is 4602, and the total dividends received balance is $500. Click on Save and notice the amount remaining is negative $375. Now, we click Add and add the dividend's retired amount. And then click Add again, and in the dividend's acquired account, leave the default at $450. Click Save, and then Save again to save the transaction. Next, click on the Asset tab. First, we will add to our assets the quantity and value of new dividends acquired. Click on Add and adjust the quantity up or down. Here we will decrease the retired dividends and increase the asset value of the new dividends. 
Click on Save. Next, we will look at prepaid expenses. Sometimes you will need to pay for expenses before you receive them and will need to expense these products as they are received. First, you will need to set up a few accounts, which are listed in the manual under the prepaid expense section. Now, click on Transactions. Write the checkout to the appropriate vendor and use account 9106, Prepaid Expense. Click Save and then Save again to save the entire transaction. Next, we will need to put $10,000 into an asset account. Click on Assets. Next, click on Add and enter the account 1120 Feed. The next step will be to reduce the asset inventory and increase the expense account once you actually receive the feed from Farmer's Elevator. You can either enter a journal entry on the Feed Asset account, or enter it in the Crop and Field module if you have the Pro or Premier versions. Next, we will look at machinery transactions. To inventory your existing machinery, go to Chart of Accounts and Assets. The default machinery group starts with 1400. These group accounts are not fixed and can be changed. So if you need more than 100 accounts for machinery, and let's say that you do not have livestock, you could start your machinery group at 1300. Or you can free up accounts by moving your land accounts to start at 1800 and building accounts to start at 1850, etc. The key to deleting group accounts is to first of all delete all the sub-accounts under that group before you can delete the group. This screen shows all the details of your current machinery. To see a report of just your machinery, click on Reports, Balance Sheet, and select Machinery and Detail. Now let's assume we will be buying a $40,000 tractor from John Deere. We will write a down payment check for $3,000, enter a trade-in for $17,000, leaving a remainder of $20,000. We will borrow the $20,000, deposit into checking, and enter the $20,000 tractor loan into a liability account. Then we will enter the new tractor into asset inventory and remove the trade-in from inventory all in the same transaction. First, write a down payment check to John Deere for $3,000. Use the 6201 Machinery and Equipment account and enter $40,000 for the amount of the total sale price. Next, enter a $17,000 trade-in using account 4606. Next, add the remaining amount, $20,000, as borrowed money, account 4902. Click on Save and this screen will appear to enter the tractor loan. Now, enter the amount remaining as zero and the $20,000 is entered into the liability tractor loan. Save and then click Save to save the whole transaction. Now, enter the new tractor into Assets. Click on the Capital Purchase tab and add the tractor. Click Save. Next, we will learn about entering land purchases.
Let's say we would like to make a land purchase of 120 acres at $800 per acre from Tom Hansen for $96,000. In checking, write a check to Tom Hansen and use 6202 or land purchase as the account. After clicking Save, click on the Capital Purchase tab and enter the land into your assets. Next, we will take a look at insurance payments with claim credits. Let's say we would like to pay our insurance premium and also include a refund credit on a claim as income received. First, we will enter a check to the insurance company for the final amount that is owed for the insurance payment, which in this example is $3,600 to account 5040. Next, we will enter the amount owed for the insurance payment, which is $9,500, and then receive a credit refund for $5,900 using account 4405. Click Save and then Save again to save the transaction. Next, we will look at Investment Transactions. Before entering Investment Transactions, make sure you have the proper accounts set up. These can be found in the manual under the Investment section. Let's say we would like to enter a check of $5,000 to our investment account at Charles Schwab. Enter the check and use the investment account 9106. Assign this to the appropriate investment account, which in our case is 1195. If we sell an investment, we will transfer the investment into account 4904, Investments Sold. If you need this account to show up as an income or expense, make sure you set up a non-farm income account in the 4700 group to keep track. After you save the transactions, click on the Asset tab to reduce the commodity from inventory. Next, we will look at Money Loaned Out and Contract on Property Transactions. This procedure would be used to track money loaned out and keep a running balance with payments received. This works the same on property sold on contract and track payments received. Make sure you have the proper account set up by looking at the manual under Money Loaned and follow the instructions. Go to Transactions and Checking. Let's say we are loaning $9,000 to our buddy, Tom Hansen. Input a check to Tom Hansen for $9,000. In the account window, use the 9104 Money Loaned. After you save the transaction, click on the Asset tab and select Tom Hansen from the list of asset accounts. Here, record the amount loaned in the 1971 account. As you enter payments, the total balance will reduce accordingly. When we receive payments, we add the amount as a deposit in the checking account and list the account as receivables. After saving the account, click on the Asset tab and click on Add. Select Account 1971, Tom Hansen, and notice the balance being reduced. Next, we will look at how to print checks. Before you print any checks, make sure you have the proper preferences set up. Click Edit and then Preferences. 
Here, you can select if you would like the vendor address to print on the check. This is useful when you have the proper envelopes and can save a step in not having to address your envelopes. The Text Adjustment sidebar lets you adjust for proper up and down alignment to accommodate different printers. Select your printer type and the print form you have. There is a form name description listed in the manual for reference. To print a check, go to Transactions. On the right side of your register screen, put a check mark on the check or checks to be printed. When ready, make sure checks are loaded into printer. Click on the Print button. Now, if you need to print yearly 1099 forms, make sure you do these three required things. First, make sure the vendor has the box checked next to 1099 in the Edit a Vendor screen. Second, make sure when you enter a check that the 1099 type is recorded under the selected account. Finally, make sure the vendor's name, address, and social security number are also listed in the Edit Vendor window. To print the 1099, click on Reports, then Tax Reports, then 1099 Miscellaneous. Next, we will look at how to print W-2s. The employer information on the W-2 comes from the ledger setup. This can be found by going to Edit, Ledger. If you do not have a federal employer ID number and you want to have your social security number printed on the W-2s, then you will need to put your Social Security number in the Federal Employer ID number position, as shown. To print a W-2, go to Reports, then Tax Reports, and select Form W-2. You can adjust the alignment of the forms with your printer by going to Edit, then Preferences, then Check Form Print, and adjust up and down with the slider. Next, we will look at the document and signature scanner. To scan in a signature to have on file, click Edit, then Preferences, then Scan Signature. Select your scanner. Write your signature on a piece of white paper using a fine point permanent marker. Set the drop down options for each field and click Scan. Grab the square with your mouse and stretch it around your signature to crop off the margins. Accept Signature. Now go to Transactions, and when you enter a new check, your signature is shown on the check. Your signature is secure as it is stored in a file that cannot be opened. Next, we will look at the process of completing a bank statement reconciliation. First, click on File, and then Close Year. A mandatory backup will be performed. When the close year is completed, your current year will automatically roll over into the new year, and the old years are accessible under the current year here. Here, you can click a closed year and go into the transactions for that year. After you close a few years, you may want to delete old years. You can do this by clicking Edit and then Remove Year. If you get an error message when closing a year, sometimes you receive an error message stating where to go back to fix transactions. Sometimes these transactions cannot be found. If this is the case, click on Help, Data Maintenance, and then Check Transaction Detail. 
Here, you will see the error log. If you have looked and have determined that these transactions are nowhere to be found, hold down the Alt key and D key on your keyboard and then click Yes. Now, you will be able to close your year without any problems. Next, we will look at how to back up and restore your data. To set up the backup for your data, click on Edit, Preferences, and then Backup. Here you can select if you would like automatic updates and you can set up the default backup folder. We recommend using a flash drive. Click here and select the location of your flash drive, which should have its own letter assigned to it. When you do a backup, it takes all of your data and history and compresses it into one file. The name of that file is called easyfarm8.ebk. If this file is present from a previous backup, it will be replaced with a backup of your current data. If date time is selected, it will not overwrite the previous backup as each backup name will differ. You can also manually backup by clicking File and Backup. To restore backup data, click File and then Restore. Next, select the location of your backup. Then, click on the ledgers you would like to restore. Then, click Go. Next, we will take a look at the Cash Flow Planner. The following screen allows you to enter your plan or budget into each income and expense account for each month of the year. You can import your previous year data by selecting the range of dates for either a fiscal or calendar year. It will import the previous year data if it is still in the current year or if the year is closed. An import will replace any data in the planner. Before you can print out your planner, it must be saved. To print your plan versus actual on the same report, go to Reports, Cash Flow, and change report type to Plan versus Actual.